do you know? There are trains that doesn't even touch the tracks. These trains, just floats and glides smoothly using powerful magnets, and can travel huge distances at incredible speeds. Emma. It might sound something like a dream, but it's real. Scientists and engineers, have been working on this technology for over a hundred years. These special trains are called magnetic levitation trains or maglev trains. Soon, maglev trains can reach speeds of up to 1,000 km per hour. That means traveling faster than ever before, almost like flying on the ground. I know about maglev trains, Charlie. It's amazing how they float above the tracks using magnetic forces without touching the rail at all. That's what magnetic levitation is all about. Since there's no friction, they can reach incredible speeds. I know that some maglev trains are already in operation. China is leading the way in high-speed train technology. They recently introduced a new bullet train called the CR450. It's designed to reach speeds of about 452 kilometers per hour. CR450 is not a maglev train, but it has smart technology to make the ride better. That's already amazing. But Emma, China isn't stopping there. They're actually working on a maglev train that could reach an unbelievable 1,000 kilometers per hour. That's even faster than most airplanes cruise in the sky. They're using special superconducting magnets inside low vacuum tubes to reduce friction as much as possible. This lets the train move at incredible speeds without slowing down. If they succeed, traveling long distances could become faster and smoother than ever before. Well, Chally, China has the fastest maglev train in operation at this moment, the Shanghai Maglev. It has been in operation since 2004. Passengers use that train regularly to travel between Shanghai Pudong International Airport and Longyang Road Station in central Shanghai. That's a 30-kilometer route. As far as I know, the top speed the Shanghai Maglev can reach is 431 kilometers per hour. I wonder how they are taking a leap toward 1,000 kilometers per hour. I mean, that's more than double the speed of the Shanghai Maglev. Good point, Emma. The biggest challenge in reaching 1,000 km per hour is air resistance. As a train moves faster, it pushes against the air in front of it, creating drag that slows it down. That's why to achieve such extreme speeds, engineers are working on placing maglev trains inside low-pressure tunnels. By reducing the air pressure inside these tunnels, there's very little air resistance left to slow the train down. This means the train can glide even more smoothly and efficiently. It will require less energy, but reach mind-blowing speeds. It's almost like how airplanes fly at high altitudes where the air is thinner to reduce drag. If scientists and engineers perfect this technology, we could see super-fast, ultra-efficient travel in the near future. Makes sense, but that sounds a lot like the Hyperloop concept that Elon Musk proposed back in 2013. He talked about high-speed pods traveling through low-pressure tubes to minimize air resistance and reach incredible speeds. Is this the same technology, or are there some key differences between what China is working on and the Hyperloop idea? That's a great question, Emma. The Hyperloop and China's high-speed maglev in low-pressure tunnels share some similarities, but they are actually different technologies. Both aim for extremely fast, low-resistance travel. But, Hyperloop focuses on small pods inside vacuum tubes, while China's maglev project is more like a traditional train. Plus, some Hyperloop designs rely on air bearings or passive magnetic levitation. On the other hand, China's new maglev project is based on superconducting magnetic levitation, just like traditional maglev trains but inside a low-pressure tunnel. These trains don't need wheels or air bearings because they are fully levitated by strong magnets. The superconducting technology allows for even higher speeds while keeping the ride smooth and quiet. That's fascinating, Charlie. Speaking of Hyperloop technology, I recently read about significant progress in India. The Indian Institute of Technology Madras has been at the forefront of this innovation. Their team, Avishkar Hyperloop, has been actively developing Hyperloop technologies and has received substantial support. LT Technology Services provided funding and technical assistance to the team to advance their research. 
Recently, the Indian Railways granted an additional $1 million to IIT Madras for further development of their Hyperloop project. This funding aims to support the creation of a 50-kilometer commercial Hyperloop corridor. It's potentially the world's longest tunnel to assess the feasibility of commercial operations. It's exciting to see such advancements in transportation technology happening in India. India's advancements in Hyperloop technology are indeed promising. But, China's progress in high-speed maglev trains is currently more advanced. China is actively moving towards commercial operation of maglev trains capable of reaching speeds up to 1,000 km per hour. In April 2023, a full-size superconducting maglev test run was successfully completed. That demonstrated the feasibility of such high speeds. That's really interesting, Charlie. It's amazing to see countries like India and China pushing the boundaries of transportation technology, making rapid progress in Hyperloop and Maglev trains. But I can't help but wonder, why are the US and Europe holding back? You'd think these regions with their strong economies and advanced engineering capabilities would be leading the way. Is it because of high costs, infrastructure challenges, or government policies? That's right. A maglev train operating at 1,000 km per hour only makes sense if it operates over very long distances. The Shanghai maglev operates over just 30 km. So, it can only stay at its top speed for about 50 seconds. By the time it reaches its top speed, it's already time to start slowing down. But, if you think about the journey from Beijing to Shanghai, it takes around 5 to 6 hours by existing high-speed rail. That journey could be shortened to about 1.5 hours with the 1,000 km per hour technology. The distance between Beijing and Shanghai is roughly 1,100 km. Such a high-speed train would be efficient over that kind of distance. Can you imagine the cost of building and operating a low-pressure tube over such a long distance? The infrastructure, maintenance, and energy requirements would be enormous. This is one of the reasons why countries like the US and Europe are being more cautious. They need to carefully consider the financial feasibility and public demand before moving forward with these ambitious projects. I guess that makes sense, Charlie. It seems like Europe and the US are focusing more on high-speed trains that can operate on existing infrastructure rather than building entirely new systems. There's also a growing push toward using hydrogen-fueled trains, which are more sustainable and can be energy efficient without needing major changes to the current rail network. With so many factors like investment, energy efficiency, sustainability, and public demand all coming into play, it's no surprise that countries are being more cautious. They're probably weighing the long-term benefits and costs of each approach before making big decisions. Absolutely right. If you look at it, there have been several maglev and hyperloop projects in Europe, the US, and Japan that have faced delays or significant challenges. For instance, the California Hyperloop project has been delayed multiple times due to regulatory hurdles and funding issues. Similarly, Japan's maglev project, which aims to connect Tokyo and Osaka at ultra-high speeds, has been running into construction delays and environmental concerns. Even in Europe, there have been proposals for maglev trains in countries like the UK and Germany, but they've struggled to get off the ground due to costs, logistical issues, and resistance from local communities. These challenges are why countries are looking for practical, scalable solutions that can work with existing infrastructure and be deployed more quickly. And of course, safety is a huge concern. If a maglev train is moving at 1,000 km per hour, the track or guideway need to be absolutely perfect, right? Even the smallest bump or misalignment could lead to a huge accident. The stakes are incredibly high with speeds like that. The precision needed in construction and maintenance would be unlike anything we've seen before. It's definitely something to consider when building such advanced infrastructure. Emma, I totally agree. Safety is absolutely critical. The Shanghai maglev levitates only about one centimeter from the track. It's already a pretty precise system. But for the 1,000 km per hour test run in China, the train was levitated about 10 centimeters from the track. At that speed, it becomes even more important to guide the train perfectly. 
Even a slightest misalignment in the guideway could cause instability or accidents. The increased levitation adds a level of complexity to the whole system. The train has to be extremely well aligned at all times to avoid any risk. This makes the engineering and maintenance of such high-speed maglev systems even more challenging. That is for sure, and that's why I can't help but wonder. Wouldn't an airplane be more practical for such high speeds? Planes already travel at similar speeds without needing expensive tracks or vacuum tunnels. Emma. I cannot deny that airplanes are excellent for long distances. But, maglev trains offer some unique advantages. They don't need runways. They're not affected by air traffic congestion. Plus, maglev trains can take passengers directly from city to city, cutting out the hassle of airports and security checks. If engineers can solve the challenges, 1,000 km per hour maglev trains could provide a faster, smoother, and more convenient way to travel. It's amazing how much effort scientists and engineers are putting into making high-speed trains faster, safer, and more efficient. I can't wait to see what happens next. Let's hope one day, you and me, will be able to ride a 1,000 km per hour maglev train. <laughs>